My name is Danielle Rod, and I am the Coleman Payson Fellow in Academic Affairs and Outreach at the Yale University Art Gallery. I support university class visits to the gallery, and in the fall of 2021, I taught a lesson for Professor Meg Urey's first-year physics seminar called Expanding Ideas of Time and Space. Inspired by that lesson, I'm going to look at how two works of art by the artist Audrey Flack, a painting and a photograph, both titled Time to Save and both made in 1979, address the nature of time. Let's start by looking at Flack's acrylic and oil painting. It's a colorful still life with a vase of flowers in the center, surrounded by a variety of objects and some flying insects. A crystal dish overflowing with fruit sits atop a luscious red fabric. Right away, some allusions or references to time jump out. There's an hourglass and a clock with the text Time to Save. The title of the work comes from this clock, which is also a piggy bank, one of many objects represented that the artist purchased at a flea market. The meaning is ambiguous. Is it time to start saving, or is time itself being saved? Audrey Flack is a contemporary American artist and Yale alumna who received a BFA in 1952. Although her work spans several genres and media, she is most known for photorealist paintings like this one. In her 1981 book, Audrey Flack on Painting, she wrote that art is a protest against death. How might this work of art be a protest against death and the passage of time? The painting references and reinterprets the traditional genre of a vanitas still life, which was popular in the 17th century, particularly among the Dutch. Vanitas paintings contain many allusions to mortality and the passage of time, like skulls and hourglasses. These paintings are a reminder of the temporality of life, the certainty of death, and the fleeting nature of beauty. The clock will keep ticking, the fruit will eventually rot, the flowers will wilt, the butterflies and other insects will fly away. Or will they? Let's study this a bit more closely. The hourglass contains no sand. The skull is far too small. It's not real human skull, but rather a plastic toy. The bird is a painted ceramic trinket. The fruit are impossibly shiny. The grapes are even gold. The flowers are a bit too perfect and vibrant. It is hard to determine whether the insects are caught in one brief moment, or rather static and fixed in place. The shadow behind the butterfly does not suggest motion. The insects and flowers are actually fake, plastic objects. In the 1970s, Flack was a pioneer of the photorealist movement, one of the first artists to create paintings from photographs. She painted Time to Save from a photograph, which is also in the art gallery's collection. Working with her photographic assistant, Flack meticulously arranged the objects to stage the still life composition. They stuck pins into fruit and used plasticine to hold pieces in place, including a flying bee and a die perched at a precarious angle, as if falling over. The photograph was printed, but also made into a slide. Flack projected it onto canvas and used it as a guide to paint a larger scale version. Using stencils, Flack applied acrylic paint with an airbrush and then oil paint to add in details on top. This was a precisely planned out process. These images remind me that works of art are not merely imagined into being, but created over a period of time through the painstaking labor of the artist. With some exceptions, like the color of the background or the rich pink of the shell in the lower right, the painting is a faithful reproduction of the photograph. This articulation between photograph and painting is characteristic of the photorealist movement. But Flack is unique in her centering of the object, creating still lifes through a series of what one critic called mechanical fictions. There is a heightened artificiality to Time to Save. It's a painting of a photograph of mundane and fake objects held in place as if caught in an ephemeral moment. I think that this painting is timeless. It is a referent to the historical genre of the Dutch Vanitas still life of the 1600s, and an exemplar of American photorealism of the 1970s that plays with the enduring, consistently relevant themes of impermanence and mortality. But it does this through a timelessness, as in being without time, 
in its presentation of a frozen instant, an illusion created through several thematic layers and manipulations.